Hallelujah. God is requiring more than what we are giving. Amen. I told Pastor Hall the reason why we could quit so easy because we don't make it about God. We make it about us. Amen. We make it about us because when we get mad, we get upset. Not a whole world on came tumbling down. Amen. But if we'll make it about Jesus, we can make it through the toughest of time. We can make it through the storm and the rain. Amen. Lady song a song one time. I've been through the storm and the rain, but I made it. Amen. Praise God. We need to be assured today to know that whatever you do, it is a not, it's not about you, whether you're singing in the choir, singing on the praise team, or usher, or deacon, or uh, whatever you may be in the house of God. It is not about you, but it's about building the kingdom. Amen. Praise God. When we start making it about us, we can be all right. Amen. Praise God, because you know what? We talk about our feelings get hurt. Our feelings get hurt. I was offended. I was disappointed. I was mistreated. But what about God? Amen. I once heard Pastor Hall say when we come all the time talking about somebody don't um, did us wrong, mistreated us, or hurt our feelings or whatever. And he was like, have, have you ever hurt anybody feeling? Have you ever offended anybody? Why when we offend somebody, it's okay, but when it's our turn? Oh, my God. We ain't never ready when it comes back. Amen. But we have to be ever so careful because we serve an awesome God. Amen. Praise God. At this time, we're preparing for the word. Praise God. And before the word comes, we're going to pre pre prepare for our offering. Amen. Oh. Oh. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Well, we're going to prepare for the word. Amen. So we ask you to prepare your hearts and minds tonight to receive the word on tonight. Amen. Our pastor is coming. Give me some more. Thank you. Praise God. Everybody's standing on your feet everywhere and every head is bowed. Every eye is closed. Dear God of the Bible, we come before you now as humble as we know how. We tell you, thank you, God, for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for this new form of media, God. We thank you that you're allowing us to reach around the world, God, not just by sound but by video, God. And so we're so thankful for this opportunity. We pray that we would do no damage to your word, God. We bind every demonic spirit, every stronghold, and every hindering spirit that would travel by way of airway. Father, we just say thank you, and we give you all the praise for everything that have gone forward up until this point. Father, I pray that I would speak with clarity and understanding 
understanding, power, and the anointing. Father, change us from the inside out. Father, we need a new attitude. We need you to work on us, God. And we thank you right now for the obedience of your people. We thank you that the word of God will not go out and return unto you void, but it will accomplish those things that it is set forth for it to do. So, Father, right now we yield ourselves under your mighty hand. Let me have me preach under the anointing, God, a right, a right now word, a revelant word, something that we can be applied to where we at in our lives today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We, we we definitely want to say God bless to our worldwide web audience. Amen. For those of us in our ministry, if you didn't know now, you know we are set up now where we're able to see the video as well as hear the video. This is our first night actually being online for the video portion of our ministry. So uh, be sure to tune in. If you, if you should miss church, but you should be here. Amen. And you will be able to see and hear what's going on here at BAM International Fellowship. So we welcome our internet audience amen to our first audio portion video portion of our streaming program amen but we thank God for all of you who are here on tonight amen it is it is Sunday night praise the Lord and we are streaming live here at BAM International Fellowship praise the Lord I want to talk to you tonight if you would lend me your ear for about a good 30 minutes and uh, we should be out of your way amen why don't you look at your neighbor and say neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor. neighbor do you know your role in the kingdom. I want to talk to you from that thought. Knowing your role in the kingdom. Uh, it's amazing that uh, so many of us think that we're unimportant, or that we're insignificant, that what you bring to the, to the body of Christ is really not important. But what you must understand is that everybody in the body of Christ serves a purpose. If, if you're a doorkeeper at this church, you're serving a purpose. And if you're not there on your post and at the door, amen, you will find out that somebody going to miss you. Do you hear what I'm saying? I, I said before, you don't know how many people come to work looking for you, Mother Grant. Uh, they're looking for you, Deacon Moe. Matter of fact, somebody asked me today, where is Deacon Moe? I'm sorry. You see what I'm saying? So when people come, they say, where is Sister Craig? <laughs> Amen. You know, people want to know. And, and, and knowing that you are valued is my job to let you see tonight that when you're not where you need to be, amen, your, your post, your role is, is, is missed. Amen. Everybody here is important. Why don't you look at your name and say, neighbor, neighbor. do you know you're important, do you know you're important? To, the to the body of Christ? Amen. Let's look at, uh, uh, God bless First Lady Hall. Amen. We uh, say God bless her tonight. Amen. We want to look into the scriptures tonight. We want to look at uh, 1 Corinthians. I think on Wednesday night of last week, uh, 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 Elder Ramsey kind of made him share a little bit of this with you all. But we want to go back into 1 Corinthians 12. If not, this is going to help somebody tonight to come up and know your role. Has anybody ever asked that question? I don't, I don't know what my role is. I, don't, I really don't know where I fit in at. So I want, I want to help you to understand where you fit in. And know that if you're not fitting where you're supposed to be, that the body is hurting. Everybody's somebody. Everybody's important. And when you're not here to do what you do, amen, it throws everything else off in the ministry. Somebody say amen. amen. No, somebody say knowing, knowing. Your, role your role in the kingdom. In the kingdom. All right, let's look at 1 Corinthians 12. When you get there, say amen. amen. 1 Corinthians 12. Hallelujah. We're going to start reading at verse 4. Amen. I'm going to be reading out of the study translation. It reads out a little bit different than the King James. It reads a little different. We'll end up in the same place. Amen. Give you a little better understanding. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4. And the word of the Lord declares. Read, book. Now there are uh -huh. diversities of gifts. Yes. But the same spirit. Now listen. There are, there are different kinds of gifts, but they all come from the same spirit. Everybody in here has a gift. Everybody. Everybody has a gift. And you got to learn how to operate in your gift for the benefit of advancing God's kingdom. If God get you, you, you might can't sing like uh, 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 the praise team. You know, but don't, don't neglect your gift because you can't sing. You may be an usher. Amen. But you want to be the best usher. That gift that God has given you to usher, you want to be the most pleasant usher that you could possibly be. Amen. Amen. You may have the gift of encouragement. 
There are just some people that just have a gift of just encourage. Well, good example of that. We, we started something new here at the ministry. Just something to encourage the young women. Something to encourage. So your gift may be, you may have the gift of encouragement. So you don't want to neglect that gift because you think that preaching is more important than your gift of exhortation or encouragement. Okay, let's say, but, but all of our gifts are working under the same spirit. Read. Verse 5. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. There are different ways to serve, but the same Lord is serving. Let me tell you something. Everybody in here was serving in the kingdom under one umbrella. That's why there should always be unity found among us. It, it, it does the body of Christ a great disadvantage for you not to be serving in the proper way that's pleasing God. That when people see us in operation, that they desire to be a part of what we're doing. People don't want to be a part of nothing that's chaotic. No, nobody wants to be a part of nothing that's out of order. When you understand your role and who you're working for, amen, it should make you want to work even the more. When, when you're not here, touch your neighbor and say, do you know... When you're, not here, when you're not here, how I miss you. I miss you. Yeah, yeah, you, you didn't tell them like you meant. Tell them, do you know when you're not here, how I miss you? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm missing you when you're not here because you don't know what your, oh God, I felt that right there. See, tell your neighbor, say, your gift, your gift. Blesses, me. blesses me. See, and, and you don't even understand the importance of what you bring, even if you don't say nothing. It's just your presence. See, your presence, when people come into your presence, amen, you bring a certain amount of pleasure to certain people. Read book. Verse 6, and there are diversities of operations. But it is the same God which works all in all. And there are different ways God works through people, but the same God. God works in all of us in everything we do. See, when, when, when you find your gift, know that even though you might not be too polished right now. You know, you, I, what do I mean by polish right now? You know, your, your gift a little rusty right now. You're kind of working on it. You know what I mean? But, but don't worry about it because it's God working in you. So whatever little ability that you got, don't, don't worry about that. Because the more you serve God, the better you will be at doing what you do. Amen. Tell your neighbor, you just need to get busy, need to get busy. Doing, something. doing something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't just sit around and neglect the gift that God is giving you. What people don't understand is that when we come together and God is working through all of us, when, when we get enough of us together doing what really pleases God, God gets involved and sends just a little bit more power into the house. Amen. I don't know if y'all noticed here recently, like when we're praying and somebody's really got a fiery prayer or somebody just ain't praying at all. I mean, you know, it just ain't no prayer, no fire, no smoke, no nothing. You know, you don't want to pray with them, but, but you mess around and get somebody shaking the very altars of heaven because they're gift they have the gift of praying amen they can pray some people just show enough can pray amen and when they praying you see what they do they will if you if, 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 if the gift of prayer is in you when, when you activate your gift and start really shaking heaven it make me now see i done told y'all now you're talking too long i'm ready to pray now i'm ready to pray i want my turn tell your neighbors i want my turn, want my turn. yeah 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 so you praying and you shaking heaven now i want to pray and shake heaven a little bit you know but you're trying to take up all the minutes but, but your gift will activate other people's gifts. It will excite other people. Do you know, even when you're preaching, if you're up here and there's no fire coming off of you, you're not, you don't raise your voice, you don't do nothing, amen, then your, your audience kind of, you know, not responsive, responding to you the way that you would desire. Read book. Verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Verse 7 says, uh, something from the Spirit can be seen in each person for the common good. I don't care what nobody says. If you don't do nothing but pick up paper in the church. Amen. I'm serious. If you don't do nothing but pick up paper in the church. See, that, that God bless you to just be a person that like, uh, see, you just, a, you the clean, tell your neighbors, I just might be the clean up person. Clean up person. Yeah, yeah, but, but you need to know that God has given you that gift of tidiness. Yes. Yes. You know what I mean? Everybody's not tidy. Amen. That's the truth. You know, everybody don't see wrinkles on jeans. I am persuaded of that. Praise the Lord. Some folks step out with their jeans on, look like they just stepped out the washing machine. But, 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 they, but to them, they all right. Some folk got the little crease in their stuff. 
Amen. Why? They're more, they, they pay more attention to the detail. If you just clean up around the church, amen, that's your gift. Don't neglect your gift because you're a doorkeeper. Right. Amen. Because without a doorkeeper, if, imagine if nobody kept the church clean. Imagine if nobody mowed the grass. Imagine if nobody took trash out. You know who one of the most important people in the world is? Is y'all, you already know what I was finna say. I know y'all say Obama's important, and I know he's important. Obama ain't coming by my house to get my garbage. Do you hear what I'm saying? Most one of the most important people in America today is the trash man Amen. on Friday when he comes to my house. Yes, sir. Yeah. Emptying your trash. No trash man. You know what I'm saying? What would the world be like without garbage people? You know, and then we may want to look down on garbage people, but their gift is the gift of sanitation. So God, God got to have people even work sanitation. Because your profession may be white collar, you may be the doctor or the lawyer, but let me tell you something, every doctor and lawyer got garbage at their house and let the man don't come get it. They calling somebody. Yes, sir. That's right. Let me tell y'all this. I'm trying to get everybody to understand what your role is in the kingdom. We don't understand that when we're not where we need to be and doing what we need, it hurt people. Whatever your gift is, you know, it's a gift, amen, to be out here working for the Lord. And God is working that gift. You're not working it. When you first get saved, you're an infant, you're a baby. Yes, you got to grow, but, but get, get, get involved, get active, amen. Staying active in God will make you more excited about coming to church. You know what I'm saying? Once you start working for God, you're excited about coming to church. When you really don't have too much to do but come and kind of like just sit, amen. Now, and ain't nothing wrong with sitting because everybody can't be uh, a chief on the one, amen. You know what I'm saying? You know, sometimes you got to sit there and just, you know, get taught some stuff. But, but, once, but once you leave out, you exit to serve and use your gift. The gift of whatever you've learned, you want to share that and reduplicate because we want to reduplicate what we learn in church. You want to be able to share what you know with other people so that other people can have the gift of the kingdom. Read book. Verse 8. For to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit. Listen, verse 8. The spirit gives one person the ability to speak with wisdom. Everybody can't speak with wisdom. Any of y'all ever just talk to somebody you know they ain't got no wisdom? Come on now, help me now, help me. Uh, uh, some of us, it just, it just ain't working. It's just not working. But he gives some of us the spirit to speak with wisdom. And the same spirit gives another the ability to speak with knowledge. Let me tell you something. Knowledge and wisdom. You need both of them to really operate properly. Amen. Because if you really got wisdom and no knowledge at all, you still, you still messed up. Because you can have all the brains in the world, amen, all the wisdom in the world, but have no knowledge how to operate that gift of wisdom, amen, you messed up. But it's the same God that's giving out both gifts. And I believe that both of those have to work together. Because there's nothing worse than having a smart fool. You know I mean? I'm serious. There's nothing, there's nothing worse than anybody got some smart people on their job, you be around smart folk, but they're really dumb. I mean, they know everything about everything, they just don't know nothing. But, I mean, they got all the wisdom. They don't have any knowledge, though. See, knowledge gives you the capacity to know what to do with wisdom. Yeah. We got to understand that if you don't have both of them operating together, you're yet missing something. Your gift of wisdom, your gift of knowledge. See, if I got wisdom and you got knowledge, guess what you can do? See, see, my wisdom and your knowledge together, you bring your wisdom and I bring my knowledge together. If we work both of our gifts together, we can make something happen in the kingdom. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. But, but we got to bring both of them together. You can't have one without the other. That's the problem in the church today. We got too many dysfunctional saints operating outside of their gift, amen, desiring somebody else's gift, doing something that God really ain't called you to do, amen. Like everybody can't work with people, amen. Some, some folk don't need to usher. They don't need to work in the parking lot. They don't need to do nothing. They just need to just be a witness for the Lord and come to church and be a good member. Amen. 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 Give me the next verse. Verse 9. To another faith by the same spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit. Verse 9 says, the same spirit gives faith to one person. And to another person, that same spirit gives the gift of healing. Let me tell you something. There are many gifts in the scriptures. The, the, knowing your role in the kingdom. 
knowing what you do. What, what, is, uh, what has God gifted you to do? Are you a friendly person? Do you have the gift of healing? There's people that have the gift of healing don't even know it. Yeah, you, 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 you've never, you, you know, every time somebody get to pray and you feel something stirring up and you want to go lay hands on folks, you can't even, sometimes you don't even understand why things are going on and you feel prompted to get up to do something. Because God is trying to activate the very gift that he's put down inside of you. And the gift of faith. See, when I read that, they say that faith is a gift that, that, that I can, you know, stretch out on my faith and use my gift of faith to believe God for things that hasn't even happened yet. Let me tell you something. You got, you got to believe it and see it before you have it and do it. Did you hear what I just said? Yeah, yeah. But you got to at least see it. You got to understand what God is trying to do. You got to know your role. Too, too many people quit their roles and, and just stop and, and, and think that it's not important. But every, every position in the church is, is important. Everything has to work in the church for you to have a healthy church. You know, and there's, nothing wrong, there's nothing worse than having a schizophrenic group of people working together. A bunch of bipolar people. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Don't nobody know their role. Don't nobody. Everybody trying to sing. Everybody, everybody want to be on the praise team. Can't have the whole church be the praise team. Oh, wow. Imagine that one. Yeah. Whole church. Come on, praise team. Everybody in the church coming up and want a mic. No. Everybody's not an evangelist. You know? Everybody's not a prophet. But you got to know what God has called you to do. And when you find it, don't bury your gift. Start working with what God has given you. Ignite the fire in you and ask God, God, perfect that which you've given me so I can, so I can be the best. See, there's nothing wrong with your desiring to be the best at what you do. If you have a job right now, you ought to want to be the best. If, if whatever you do in the working, in, in the secular world, there ought not be nobody on the job that works better than you. If anybody's thinking about giving out a promotion, if, if a raise is coming, they ought to have you on their mind. Why? Because you're working your gift. To that gift of healing and, and that same spirit give you the gift of faith. Verse 10. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. The same spirit gives to another person, persons, the same, the spirit gives to another person the power to do miracles. See, everybody can't do miracles. Everybody can't do miracles now. You, you just got to know if God has gifted you to do miracles. You understand? And if God has gifted you to do miracles, don't you worry about nobody talking about you being able to do miracles. Because it's amazing how, you know, people criticize being a hen. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people just criticize the man. You know, but if God has given Benny Hinn the gift of miracles and look like to me, I don't believe he's paying everybody to get out of a wheelchair. I, I believe God, God, yes, God used Benny Hinn. In, that, in the arena of miracles, I believe God uses Benny Hinn. That's his gift. Now, is he perfect? No. Is he done nothing wrong? Yes. Is God using him? Most definitely. Yeah. But, but see, he has the gift of miracles. God has given some of us the gift of miracles. We just haven't tapped into it. There's a lot of people in here, I hear the Lord say, tell them. There's some people in here right now have the gift of miracles, amen. But every time God want to tell you to do something, you let fear grip your very heart, and now you just back up and won't operate in that gift. Am I talking to anybody? You, you know whether that's you or not. You believe if I go up there and lay hands on Mother Strong, I believe she'll get up out that wheelchair. I believe if I go over there and lay hands on her legs or lay hands on this baby, I believe they'll be here. See, now, I don't know if you got that in you or not. But if you know God is stirring something up in you, they're to say, Lord, Pastor, can I, can I touch him? And wouldn't it be amazing that you step out on your faith and, 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 and walk into the gift of miracles and lay hands? And, and I tell you what, if that happened, you, you, never, you would never be sorry. But you can't be afraid to, 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 to move in there. But you don't be, now listen, listen. You don't just jump up out your seat and go laying hands on folk like you're crazy. Right. You know, you, you know, because you up here laying hands on people, rebuking devils. and No, you, you don't just jump out your seat and just run up here and start throwing oil on people. <laughs> Talking about I, God gave me a word for you. No, don't do that. That's out of order. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Everything got to be done and decent and in order. And in order. Amen. You ask the pastor, is it okay if I prophesy? Is it okay if I lay my hands on them, pastor? Yes. Did he say yes? If he say no, go sit down. 
Amen. Don't just be laying hands anyway. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to lay hands anyway. No, you might get hands laid on you. You might. Security might come get you. Because you know folk will be figuring, man, they, ain't, they don't, and everybody don't want you laying hands on them. See, that's why you need permission. That's right. Everybody ain't too excited about people jumping up out of seats talking about God told me to come pray for you. You know, and God may very well have told you to do that, but you, you need to do it in order, get permission so that people will be receptive. Because if I say it's okay, more likely the people will be more receptive to let you do that. A lot of times people want to do things without the permission of the leader, even though you got the gift to do it. You still have to release that gift in order. It says the Spirit gives another person the power to do miracles, to another the ability to prophesy. What is to prophesy, to bring forth a word, to talk for God, to, to, you know, to, to tell maybe of future things, prophesy that something's going to happen. Is there anybody ever have premonitions? Do y'all know what a premonition is? Has anybody ever been to a restaurant? Have you ever been somewhere and in your mind it seemed like you've been there before? Yes. You know, you pulled up somewhere and you say, you know what? Seemed like I done been here before. A premonition. God has allowed you to look into the future and you saw some things. Matter of fact, you dreamed it and now you're actually living it. You done met people before. You say, I done met you before somewhere. God allowed you to tap into something that you, that the, somebody say into the supernatural. supernatural. Well, now he gives some the gift to prophesy, uh-huh, to speak that word. And he gives another the ability the ability to know the difference between good and evil spirits. There are just some people, you, automatically you can tell when the devil at work. Is there anybody know that right quick? I mean, you just know this is the devil right here. I just can sense the devil. And you know when it's something good. This is good right here. You know, when you got that kind of gift, that's to be treasured. That you can discern the difference between good and evil. Because everybody ain't good and everybody ain't evil. But you sure need to be able to tell the difference. Now, and it's getting very hard to tell that. It is. It's very, and that's why you need to be operating in your gift. Because I, I'm telling you what, I know so many people say they got the gift of discernment, and I don't believe they have it. I just don't. Because everybody that you see ain't, ain't demonic. Mm, that's right. You know, I mean, right. I got the spirit of discernment. God done showed, and it's funny that God done showed you everybody but you. Right. Yeah. Ain't that funny? Ain't that funny? You discerning everybody. You, 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 you know everything about everybody But he ain't showed you you I, I think before he showed you the discernment about me He gonna be the showed you you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tell your neighbor say Before you discern me Figure you Yeah 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 Don't, don't be talking about you got all these here gifts now uh -huh. But if you know the difference between good and evil spirits It say the spirit gives the person the ability to speak In different kind of languages uh -huh. That's talking about tongues now uh -huh. And that's a gift Somebody say that's a gift yeah, yeah. The Spirit gives one person the ability to speak in different kind of languages. Amen. To another, the ability to interpret that language. You know what? I, I, I'm, I'm kind of saddened in the church today that everybody's seeking to speak in tongues, but ain't a whole lot of people seeking to understand it. See, it's the gift to be able to interpret tongues. Can I, can I, can I help y'all tonight? Now, don't get upset by what I'm about to say, because what I'm about to say is very true and very biblical. If we in here speaking in tongues and nobody interpreted, we need to hush. That's the Bible. If nobody's there to interpret what you're saying, you know, and it's not edifying the Bible, we need to limit that. Because it needs to be one speaking in tongues and somebody to interpret it. That's what the scriptures say. When you see, and then, and then you know some of us, we get so happy in the church with the ya 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 ba 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 and can't shut up. Now, now you know that ain't God. That's an evil spirit. Because the spirit is subject to the prophet. Meaning, meaning God ain't letting you run off in tongues and you can't shut up because you done got so happy. I, I, I see you, Reverend. That, that ain't, that's unbiblical right there. And we got a lot of that going on in church. Folk just getting happy, speaking in tongues, shouting, shouting, shouting. Ain't nobody gave no revelation. We got a lot of people wanting to speak in tongues as the proof that you have the Holy Ghost. That gift. That's one of the main gifts that people want to say, well, this is the evidence to know that you, you know, full of the Holy Ghost is that you speak in tongues as the Spirit of God give you utterance. Well, let me tell you something. That is one of the gifts that will tell you that you have the Holy Ghost. One of the greatest gifts to let you know that you're full of the Holy Ghost is not, it, it is partially with the speaking of tongues, and I, would, and I would admonish anyone to desire that gift, but, but also desire to understand. Ask God to give you the interpretation of what you're saying. Amen. So, so that the body can be edified by it. 
But if you really study the scripture, amen, we're talking about these gifts and abilities. Let me tell you something. The greatest, the, the greatest gift, the people to know that we do have the Holy Ghost dwelling in us richly is the love that we show one to another, one to another. Yes, That's it right there. Yeah, yeah, the love, the love that we have for each other. That let people know you got the Holy Ghost. The Bible says you will lay hands on the sick and they were, that's another sign right there. You may not speak in tongues, but you may lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. That's saying that you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Hmm? And it say then if you drink any deadly thing, which I ain't trying to drink nothing deadly. I ain't trying to drink nothing deadly. I'm just not going to play. Are y'all going on it? If if, no, Lord, I believe I got love. I take love. I'm not trying to drink no strict nine. I'm not trying to drink nothing, you know. No, no. No, sir. No, sir. Uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm going to do the love. Take this. I'd rather do the love thing. I'd rather do the love thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd rather do that one. I'd rather lay hands on the sick and see the sick recover. Or I'd rather speak in tongues. But I ain't trying to drink nothing deadly. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. But, but I know that we need to seek the interpretation of tongues, even in our ministry. Because we got a lot of tongue talkers in our church. We do. I mean, I do. You know, but if we're going to do it, somebody, get, somebody need to be saying, it's the gift. See, now, if I'm trying to teach you tonight, it says, and he gives some the gift of interpretation. So you need to be asking God, even if you don't speak in tongues, that you could be the person who understands the interpretation of what they're saying. And now as they speak, you can come to the mic and say, and this is what they're saying, Pastor. Oh, boy. Has, has, can I ask y'all a question tonight? Has anybody ever been in hearing somebody speak in tongues and you think that you really in tune with what they're saying? You feel like you know what they're saying. God's told you this is what they're saying. Now, why don't you go up there and tell them what they say? No, God. No, I'm not going up there. Uh-uh. I might be wrong. But then again, you might be right. Do you know how you move forward with that? Dare to trust God. If you know you saved and you believe that. Have you been asking for the interpretation of the gift? Then if, then if you feel like God is saying this is what that means, then operate, it by, operate in it by faith. Operate in it by what? Faith. Do you know how you even speak in tongues, y'all, when you're des desiring the gift of speaking in tongues? Because so, so often I think that we, we want the gift of speaking in tongues, but we, we're sitting around waiting on a lightning bolt to come down out of heaven and slap you where you're completely out of your mind and you ain't going to know what you're doing. When you're speaking in tongues, you are aware of what you're doing. You're not completely out. See, if, if you're completely out of your mind, that's chaotic. You speak in tongues by faith. As the Spirit of God give you utterance, you speak. And the way that you feel the utterance is that you feel faith rising up in you. And now you begin to speak what you feel that the Lord is having you to speak. Same thing with the interpretation. If you feel like God is giving you the revelation to say what you're saying and explain it, move in that arena. See, it's God, I'm telling you about your place, your place in the kingdom. See, it's God that's working in us. Do y'all realize that some of us sitting right here have, have a lot of these gifts that I'm talking about? But you're letting it lay dormant, you're afraid. See, fear keeps a lot of people from operating in the supernatural. And that's where I'm trying to hang out at. I want to hang out in the supernatural. I want to, I, you know, I think one of the greatest things to have ever experienced in the whole Bible would have been to have been with Moses, amen, at the Red Sea. I believe that would have been awesome to be a part of that right there, amen. To, hear, to see Pharaoh thinking he finna get us, amen, and I'm nervous, I'm shaky, I'm worried, amen. Moses ain't got nothing but a stick. They coming with horses and chariots, knives and guns and bullets, amen. And here we are standing at the Red Sea and mountains on both sides and Pharaoh coming in behind us. But then here come God. Man, God split the whole sea. And then they, then the, can you picture them coming across and shaking their tamarines, going in there on dry land? See, 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 the, uh, faith, y'all, faith, operating in your gift. See, Moses had to be obedient to God and stretch out the rod. But we need to be seeking understanding of these tongues. We don't want to be a church where we got a lot of stuff going on and people now joining, ministry moving forward. And now they say, well, they don't really understand because you know what? I'm teaching. I'm one of the best Bible teachers in the body of Christ today. And you will not be ignorant. People will not come in and say, we do not know what we're doing. That's just the truth. You don't want people joining us. Look, here, do they understand somebody need to be in? Yes, y'all already know that. So I'm asking all of us who tongue talk. I'm asking all tongue talkers. Amen. To, to seek earnestly to be able to understand what you're saying. So after you speak it, if nobody else can tell us what you were saying, you tell us. Yes. Yes. Instead of all of us running around talking about Shabbat 
You know what I'm saying? And nobody know what Shabbat Ra means but you and God. And the, and the Bible says that don't benefit the body. If nobody's, if you just shouting around here in tongues, that ain't, that ain't, that, that tongues only glorifying you and God. That, that, see, and we don't come together. We do not come in a corporate setting for you and God to get y'all groove on. We come in here collectively that we all grow together. And whatever we're doing as a group should help the other person. Paul said, I would rather speak, speak 10,000 words in a, in a known tongue. You know what I'm saying? That then speaking a whole lot of words in, in, in unknown tongues. Yeah. Because he said that, that ain't helping nobody. We need to un earnestly desire the gift of interpretation. Everybody want to speak in tongues, though, because they think that make them so spiritual. I don't seen too many tongue talkers. They raise too much sand for me. Y'all ain't got to say nothing about them. I'm going to talk about them. They speak in tongues. They're still too mean. Maybe if they understood and got an interpretation of it, God be telling, will you be nice, please? Yeah, would you would you please be nice? Read book. Verse 11. But all these works that one and the self same spirit dividing every man severely as he will. One spirit, this is verse 11. One spirit, the same spirit, does all these things and the spirit decides what to give each person. Let me tell you something. The spirit decides what to give. Don't get mad if you don't get what you're asking for. Because do you understand the spirit decides what to give you? Because God knows he can't give all of us some stuff. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. You can't work no miracles because you'll be all at the snow trying to heal people. You, you'll be all in the post office raising money, got a prayer line going on out there. You be done got you some plates, some cars made up. Praise the y'all ain't saying nothing. He know he can't make you no. No, uh uh, no, not you. No, you be all at the hospital trying to raise up the dead and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. So he know he can't give you that gift. It's just certain things God know not to give some of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can't give you that. So he give you something simple. And you need to perfect that. And don't think that that's not important. Because everybody plays a role. See, I'm telling you something. God put us all in the body to work together. Read book. Verse 12. For as the body is one and has many members and all the members of that one body, being many are one body, so also is Christ. A person's body is only a person's body is only one thing, but it has many parts. Though there are many parts to the body, all those parts make only one body. Christ is like that also. Verse 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether be whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Some of us are Jews and some of us are Greeks. Some of us are slaves and some of us are free. But we were all baptized into one body through the spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, and we are all made to share in the one spirit. Verse 14. For the body is not one member, but many. Listen, the human body has many parts. Read 15. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Is, is it therefore not of the body? Verse 15 says, the foot might say, because I am not the hand, I am not a part of the body. But saying this word would not stop the foot from being a part of the body. Let me tell you something. See, the foot. See, I may be the foot and you may be the hand. We need each other though. I'm talking about understanding your role. Nothing worse than have two feet and no hands. Uh, two, 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 two hands and no feet. You got to understand that all of us got to work together to make this thing successful for the kingdom. And you got to understand that you're important. And the foot is not more important than the hands. And the hands are not. See, we walk around in here like big shots because you're the one do all the preaching. You know what I'm saying? You, you're not the big shot. You're really the one that's doing all of the preaching. And up front, he catch the first bullet when they start shooting. That's all. That's it. Amen. He's the one that, that, that uh, 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 has, has the bigger job, amen, because he's the chief servant of everybody. Amen. amen. And, and, and because you're the foot, you know, you're down at the foot, and I'm going to tell my foot I don't need my foot. Not only do I need my foot, I need all five toes on my foot. Do, do you understand that? Uh, we got some medical people here. Cut your big toe off and see how you walk. Yeah, cut your little toe off. Just take, your, take the little pinky toe. Just get the little pinky and cut it off and see. 
You walking like you done had some Jack Daniels or something around here. Like you've been sipping some brewskis or, you know. No, the little toe can't tell the big toe. I don't need to be on this foot. This is how serious this thing is. When we don't think that each other's important, you know what, when you don't think people are important, that's why you mistreat the foot. That's why you can mistreat the hand because you don't think that what they do is important. You got to understand that everybody's important in here. You got to understand what your role is in the kingdom. See, everybody can't do what everybody else does. But if everybody understands that you're important to the body to help BAM International even flourish, amen, that'll make you prompt you to know that you got to be on point every day of your life. You can't be caught out of character cussing at the stove. Yeah. Verse 16, and if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? The ear might say, because I'm not the eye, I am not a part of the body. By saying this would, would, by saying this would stop not the ear from being a part of the body? Let me tell you something. I need my eyes and I sure need my ears. And we need both of them working together. Amen. Your eyes and your ears. See, see, if you didn't have no ears, imagine you, imagine you a head with no ears. <laughs> oh, wow. He's so crazy. Could you, could you? He, he's cute. <laughs> imagine your head without no ears on it. Imagine me. I, I couldn't wear these glasses right now. Oh, God. I, 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 I have to have me a strap around my head. Could you, could you imagine that? Oh my God. People walking around with no ears. <laughs> imagine your eyes. You got ears, but all the, you got no eyes at all, just sockets. Wow. Could you imagine that? Mm. See, see, everything in the body works. See, right, the reason why we can't seem to work together, don't nobody seem to understand that ears are important yes, they are. for the hearing. See, I can't see everything crazy going on in church. But that's why God got y'all out there with eyes. So when, so when you see crazy stuff going on, you don't just walk by it and let it keep going on. You, you, you step up to the plate and say, hey, we can't have that around here. That can't be going on here. I saw it. Amen. But pastor, it's just too much. You know, I saw it. It's just too much mess going on in the church. See, you don't even know your role. See, you the eyes of the church. God allow you to see stuff and you go hop in your car and zoom away. I just let them deal with all that crazy. <laughs> That ain't God. That ain't God. God got you as eyes. Let me tell you something. All eyes need to hear this. I'm talking, to, calling all eyes. <laughs> calling all eyes to flow number one. All eyes. For, for all that God let your eyes see and you don't straighten out and just let it linger in his house, you're going to be held accountable for that on the day of judgment. He wouldn't allow your eyes to see it if he didn't want you to try to help fix it. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you hear what I'm saying? Now, and, and one thing about what I'm teaching today, once you get the knowledge of the truth and know that what I'm telling you is biblically sound and you don't do it, you held accountable for that. Maybe you didn't know all, I'm calling all ears to flow number two. All ears. When the Lord allow your ears to hear gossip and you don't try to put a stop to it, but you carry it on, you going to answer for all that foolishness that you allow to hear and you don't, you, you don't put a stop to it. That's why ministries can't move forward. Too many people are ears in the church. See, see, God got ears in the church. See, your ears, tell your neighbors, my ear is still tied to the grapevine. Yeah, 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 my ear still tied to the grapevine. And, and when I hear something ain't going on right at church, I'm not finna just let this go. You ain't talking about my sister on my road with me. Hey, sis, come here. We got to get this straight. My ear's still tied to the grapevine. I know that we got to get this fixed. We got to get this straight. See, when God give you ears to hear, he ain't giving you ears so you can hear it and not do anything with it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, there are ears in the body of Christ. And that's all you, listen, don't you try to be the eye. Could you imagine ears where your eyes at? Could you imagine that? Could you imagine your eyes where your ears at? 
bumping in the stuff you can't see straight. You can't even drive a car. Everything that's down the road, you, 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 you can only turn corners in your car. Somebody say amen. amen. See, I'm, I'm, I'm saying something not to be funny though. But if you're an ear, don't try to be an eye. Stay where the ears are. Amen. Keep your ear tied to the church. So when you hear stuff, you, 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 my, you my ear patrol. Anybody on the ear patrol in church? Or the eye patrol? Yeah. God lets you hear stuff and see stuff. So that you can bring a hope to stuff instead of just letting it linger on. It's just so much. It, it, it troubles me when I hear the, the eyes talking about just so much mess going on. What, what, what you saw the mess and ain't stop it? You the ear? I'm, I'm talking about knowing your role in the kingdom. If you ears in the kingdom and you hit what I, and, and it just, it, 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 it worries me that I just don't want to get involved. Well, if God lets you hear it or see it, he wants you to get involved. We need to be protecting one another with our ears and eyes. You see somebody trying to sneak in our ministry, you know they ain't no good. You say, Pastor, you better watch them. I'm just telling you, they tear up everywhere they go. I, I know they got a reputation. Don't be afraid to say it. It'll be between me and you. But you want to give me a heads up. You don't want me to let the devil come sleeping, creeping through the door. Old Casanova knocking off all my good single girls up in here. Amen. Amen. You a good girl, old Casanova done came in here. He done been all over the, every other church. Now he done visited over him. That's everywhere she goes. She's just a floozy now. I'm telling you. Don't counsel her by yourself to keep the door open, the blinds open. You know. Talk to her out in the parking lot, Pastor. Don't, don't get behind closed doors with her. Because, you know, she, she, or oh, everywhere she goes, she talking about she with the pastor. See, I need y'all to know that. I don't know. I'm so gullible. I be in there talking. Next thing I know, she my girlfriend. Tell your neighbor, say, if you are I, if you are I and he let you see it, he let you see it do, something about it. do something about it. Tell him, say, if you an ear, if you an ear and you hear, something, you hear something, do something about, do it. Something about it. it. Now, this is a message all in itself that's inclusive, all good, because it's tying together so good. Do you understand your role? You the ear in the church. You the eyes. You the feet. The feet got to hand out flyers. The hands got to be handing out flyers. We got to work the ministry together. When God gives you the ability to do things, you don't want to not do what you need to do with your gift in, in, in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read, book. I got I to gotta hurry. I got about 10 minutes here. Verse 17. If the whole body were an eye, yeah. where were the hearing? Could you imagine your whole body being an eye? <laughs> wild. Dirty. Ain't they got some little cartoon where it ain't nothing but an eye? Yes, it is. I remember seeing it somewhere. It's a cartoon. And, and he's just one big eye. His yeah. Now you see how that look? I would not want that. <laughs> if, if everybody was an eye, where would the hearing be? Can I tell you something? Slow down, saints. Hear me good. Saints, listen. God got all of us in the kingdom as, and, and we're doing roles in the church. Do you know when everybody, mm, when everybody understands what their function is, the church functions better? Do not be an eye and see stuff and walk by. Run, get in your car, and leave the trouble in the church. Help us weed out the trouble. If everybody was an ear, where would the, could you imagine your whole body being an ear? If the ear was an ear, how could we see? Everybody in here got to know your role in the kingdom. Read book. If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? Read. Verse 18. But now God had set the members, every one of them in the body, as it has pleased him. I'm going to bless y'all right here. Y'all better pay close attention to this right here. Don't get mad at me because I'm finna show you some revelation here. You cannot go to church anywhere you want to go. You cannot plant yourself wherever you want to be planted. Read that one more time. Who plants you where you're supposed to be? Uh, verse that. 18. Read 18 again. But now uh -huh. has God set the members, uh -huh. every one of them in the body, uh -huh. as it has pleased him. God put you where he want you. And once God puts you there, you, you, you just don't uproot yourself because that's what you want to do. No, you don't. Because it's God that tells you what to do. Understanding your role in the kingdom. That's verse uh, 18. 18. Listen at this. Uh, read 19 as well. Give me 18, 19. And if there were all one member, where were the body? Listen, it says if each part of the, this 18, 
If each part of the body were the same parts, there would be no body. But truly God put all the parts, each one of them, in the body as he wants them. God put you in the body where he wants you. And when God put you, put you in the body, he wants you to stay active doing what he, being where he put you. It got quiet right there. Uh-huh, verse 20. But now are they many members, yet but one body. So then there are many parts, but only one body. See, we got to understand our part, where we fit our role in the kingdom. And when you find out, honey, you will be so fulfilled. You know, everybody's looking for fulfillment in people. Do you know, do you, know you will not always be happy with the person that you got? I can't get no help. I know y'all ain't going to agree with that. Well, you think you're going to always be thrilled to death with the person you got. It's going to be some days with the person you got, you're going to hate you with them. Now, now the amen's just standing out right there, though. Amen's just stand on out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's going to be some days you're going to say, Lord, I should not have gotten with this person right here. But if you know your function, listen, listen. The important thing is to know your function in the body. Because if you're working where God puts you, you're able to deal with the dysfunctions of life. Because that's just a dysfunction. Because you ain't going to totally be happy with people forever. It's going to come a time that you're going to say, dog. And if you ain't saved, you'll be saying something else. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, mm. yeah. So you got to understand your role because what happens when you're working for God, it supersedes the troubles that you experience in life because the joy now of the Lord becomes your strength and not what you're doing for people. A lot of times when you're in the body, you have to deny yourself what you want to do. Amen. You can't go everywhere you want to go when you know that you got a role in the church to play. You can't be out of place when you know that you got a responsibility. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. They clap stand and out. Show enough now. But when you know your role, amen, you understand that you got to be in the body. I don't need to come to church and all my eyes gone. All the eyes gone out the church today. Ain't no ear in the church. Nobody hearing nothing. You got to know, it might be every eye going to be off today, but if I'm an eye, God, a pastor going to have him one eye at church this Sunday. I'm not going nowhere. I'm not nosy, but I know I got the eye to watch after my pastor. I got my first lady back. I've got ears. They tied to my, my ears, still tied to the wife, to the grapevine. I'm listening for anything crazy. Show sure is. And if I hear it, I'm going to straighten it out. Yeah, you ain't going to like me. You're going to hope I leave the church, but I ain't going nowhere. Sure way. You ain't running me off. I'm going to be right here protected. I'm, I'm the watchman on the wall. Yes, sir. I'm the security police. Mm -hmm. I'm the eyes and the ears of the pastor. I'm the feet and the hands of the ministry. Uh-uh. No, no, no. Mm -mm. Read book. Verse 21. And the eye cannot say to the hand. Uh -huh, the eye can't say to the hand. I have no need of you. See, I need everybody in here to be on their post. God's talking about the body not being members. Read book, it was kind of odd when you weren't here today. You understand? Because you read book. Anybody miss read book today? Amen. Amen. Read book was sleep. Hey, y'all, read book. Read book say, <laughs> read book say, he, he was chopping trees and he didn't wake up to one o'clock. <laughs> Amen. See, but I still love him. I still, I, said, I, I, didn't, I didn't take my read book down. Praise the Lord. He, yeah, you did call read book. Read, read book say, he woke up like, you know how you ever wake up late for work? Yeah. And you wake up in panic mode, <laughs> putting on the wrong stuff. <laughs> get to church, you got two different shoes on, get to work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Two different earrings. You look at yourself like you thought you were fly. <laughs> Boy, let me take these off. I got the wrong stuff on. But listen, when you're not here, can I tell y'all this? Sister Boston, when you're not here, when we're not, when we're not on my post, I ain't finna let nobody hold my post down. I know what my role is in the church. I, I'm gonna hold it down too. And if I'm not gonna be there, I'm calling my leader. He gonna know one set of eyes gonna be out, but, but I'm gonna call my sister because I know we the watchman. I'm gonna make sure she gonna be there though. If I'm an ear and I know I got another ear, I'm calling another ear. Ear, I ain't gonna be here today. Ear, you got him? Yeah, cover it, ear. We need some ears in the house. Do, do, are y'all getting this message? Knowing your role in the kingdom. Knowing, see, when you understand that your role is important and when people don't see you in church, let me tell you something, it does damage to the body. 
When you got other things that's more important than you being on your post doing what you put in the body to do. To see, hear, walk, feel, smell, touch. If all of that's not operating in the ministry, the ministry suffers that week. And you should have your ministry in place of everything else. Why? Because if you're taking care of God's business, he's going to take care of yours. Read book. Nor again, the head to the feet. Uh huh. I have no need of you. Right. See, the head can't say to the feet. Can you imagine your feet where your head at? Could you imagine that? Them big bunions, your feet tied up on your head? Can you see that there? <laughs> them big old big old feet on your head sticking off sticking off like 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 that your feet hanging off way up there your forehead way out there got them your feet you standing on your head you can't even stand up you like one of them little roller balls you know them balls that you push down and they they, they come right back up all the time how you be if you stand on your head like your head round you be like one of them little balls all the time and your feet will be up there and folk will be making fun of you like you at the fair See, we cannot put something... Listen, you know what that's really saying, though? See, you can't be what God don't want you to be, though. The, the feet can't take over the head spot. Right. So you got feet that want to be head. And you got heads that want to be feet. And that's why the body is dysfunctional. Read, book. Verse 22. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. Even the small parts that seem to be feeble are important. Do you know your little finger right here plays an important part of your hand? If you lost this finger right here and you got to write, you got to hold a pen or something in your finger, do you know how, how difficult that would be? Do you know if you lose your thumb, if the thumb, if your thumb was gone, you got four fingers there, you got to try to write like this? Hold a pencil. Because the thumb is so important. Let me tell you something. The thumb can't say to the little thing, I don't need you. I'm saying a message today to understand that everybody must know. It's so important that we understand that BAM cannot be anything when the eyes, the feet, the hands, the ears, the nose, the smell is not all together. And, and nobody in here's part, he said the most commonly part, are important. Even the small parts of people are important. The people who we think so slow and indifferent, they play an important part to the work in the body of Christ. Read book. Verse 23. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncommonly parts have more abundant comeliness. Verse, what, what verse that is? 23. 23. Listen at 23. Amen. 23 say, and the parts of the body that we think are less deserving are the parts of the body which we give the most honor. We give special re respect to the parts we want to hide. Don't we? Don't, yes, 24. Read book. For our body, commonly parts, have no need. But God has tempered the body together, having, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. Read book. Verse 25. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. Wow. Verse 25 say, so our bodies would not be divided. God wants the different parts, the different parts to care the same for each other. See, do y'all understand when we start operating and knowing our role in the kingdom? He said, that's what God wants. That, see, see, when we start doing what God wants, that's how ministries are blessed. That's how your house get blessed. That's how you begin to know what's right and what's wrong for you. Yeah, go ahead. Verse 26, and whether one member suffer all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Yeah, listen, if one part of the body suffer, all the parts of the body suffer with it. Do you know when you got a toothache, it feel like everything in your body hurting? Yeah. I've never had an earache. I've never had one. But if any of you have ever experienced an earache, they say an earache makes everything feel like it's coming apart. Yeah, migraine headaches. Listen, if, if you have a migraine headache, that'll make you think you're having cardiac arrest and everything else going on. Off riders be acting up, everything. He said, but if one of the bodies suffer, we all should suffer with it. Or if one part of the body is honored, all of the other parts should share in the honor. Can I tell you what? We don't, we don't appreciate in the body each other like we should. 
He says we should all be thankful when we see God blessing other people in the body and people are getting jobs and people are getting houses, people are getting saved, you know, people are getting cars and, you know, different things. We should celebrate with them. We should be happy to see people prosper. Amen. I'll give honor to somebody. Don't, don't just overlook when God is blessing people because we want, we want people to share in the glory and what God is doing in our lives. Amen. Read book. I got to hurry now. Verse 27. Now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. Now, verse 27, that's 27. Together you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of the body. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, neighbor. You, are you are a part of me. Of me. Now read, 28. And God has set some in the church. First, apostles. Secondarily, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles, then the gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Now, all of these gifts, you can operate in one of those. Yes, yeah, one of these are for you. Tell your name, say, one of these are for you. Yeah, yeah, one of them, amen, amen. First apostles, second the prophets, third the teachers, then God has given a place to those who do miracles, those who have gifts of healing, and those who can help others. Is, is there, sister, sister, what you call it, just volunteered to help. There's people that just want to help. See, that's a gift. Because everybody don't want to help people. Mm -hmm. And some people just only, cause, see, when you, when you hear your, your ear tied to the grapevine and you hear that there's a need and you don't nobody have to ask you, will you do it? You step up to the plate and say, I can do that. Can I do that? See, that's a gift. The gift of helps. Yes, I can put some, like they met the day after church. We're going to help each other to pull some things off. We're helping each other to make sure that whatever we set our minds to do, it's going to be a success. So be thankful for the gifts of helps. Those who are able to govern. Those who can speak in different language. 29, last verse. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Read 30. Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Last 31. But covet earnestly the best gifts and yet show it to you a more excellent way. He goes into 13 and we'll, we'll close it. He goes into 13 saying all of these other gifts that he just talked about, that's fine. He said, but let me tell you what's really important. He goes into 13 and y'all know 1 Corinthians 13 is the love chapter. Amen. He said, but the greatest gift of everything, apostles, prophets, preachers, teachers, he said, the greatest gift of all is that we learn how to love one another and be true and honor one another with the gifts that God has given us. See, some things, it's, there's intelligent people in this congregation right now. You got computer skills and, and drawing skills and art skills and you know how to you know you know how to administrate amen you can do things okay well don't you sit on those gifts amen come and say pastor do you need any help in administration I can file stuff I can enter stuff and I'm a data process enter I can do things for the work amen I'm, I'm willing to use my gifts and my abilities to whatever length I can use them for the benefit of advancing the body of Christ do you understand when your desire is to advance the body of Christ that your life is much better and fulfilling there's no greater joy. Why are you busy trying to build up Wally World and Danny World and Susie World? Amen. You need to be trying to advance Jesus' world with your gifts. And God will take good care of you. Show you the more. Ex there, 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 is, there is not one person here who is not valuable in the eyes of Jesus and his Father God. Everyone has a role to play in the kingdom. When you are not in your place on the team, the team suffers. And the kingdom is done a great is done great damage by our lack of support to the things of God in the advancement of the of the of the kingdom of God that Jesus came to set up. We we must not take our place in the kingdom lightly. Let me tell you, some of y'all don't think what you do is important. Sister Amanda, I don't have, just even tonight since you got here, some more little girls been back there giving a positive receipt. Do you understand now that I took on that role, how, my, how, how me being where I need to be now is super important now? Because these little girls now, they all of a sudden got a role model. Somebody that I'm, oh yeah, yeah. And they tell me, and if we do it more, just said, it, and if we do this more often, I believe it, when I bite that mother along, yeah, the little girl said, and if we do this more often, I believe it will help me understand. Oh God. See, now that, yeah, it put more responsibility on me, but that's why I'm here. Why? I'm a helper. I got a gift, and I'm going to use my gift to help these young girls. We don't want to see them with teen pregnancy. and No, that's just wrong to be saved at a young age and having babies. 
No, that's why we want to prevent these things. That's why we want to come together and understand my role. I better not hear you. you I better not see my little young girl. I'll be on Facebook and see your page if you want to. I'm calling your mom and daddy. I'm wondering, hey, you better look at your daughter page. Some of y'all see stuff. Well, I ain't going to get involved. Why not? You the eye. See, that's another thing you're going to be held accountable for. If God let you scroll through there and you see one of our children posting something or tweeting something that's ungodly and unrighteous, and then you, you y'all are so wrong. You'll start talking about the people's family and talking about their children instead of you trying to go directly in and help that family. And we wonder why there's so much, and it says, so there will be no, you know why we do that? It, it said it, and it said I kind of rushed. It says, so there will be no schisms in the body. Any infections, we want to come with the antidote. We don't want to come with, no. If I hear it or see it, don't let me hear it or see it. People get mad with me. I, I, I try not to go on Facebook right now because it would be so discouraging because I have to inbox people stuff that they don't want to hear. What you, what you talking like that for on here? And you talking about you love Jesus just a couple verses up. Come on now, that's schizophrenic. Hallelujah. Let me bring this thing on in. Don't take your role lightly. Because in Jesus, in Jesus' kingdom does not, don't take your role lightly. Because if Jesus' kingdom does not advance, it's our fault. If the kingdom of God does not advance, it's our fault. Because we are his hands and feet in the earth. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. You his eyes, his hands, his feet in the earth. Uh -huh, uh huh. So for this reason, we must know our role in the kingdom. Can we say amen? amen? Knowing your place in the kingdom will give us a greater love and respect for Jesus Christ and kingdom work. Can we say amen? amen. Knowing your place. Knowing your place. Have I helped anybody tonight? Amen. Anybody got any help tonight? Come on, put your hands together. Amen. For the word of the Lord tonight. Amen. My time is up, and I thank you for yours. We want you to stand to your feet all over the building. All over, don't, please don't move. The camera's still rolling, so please hold your feet in the sanctuary. Amen. But if you're standing to your feet right now. Hallelujah. There's maybe one by way of internet, by way of here tonight. You're here in this building, and you do not know Jesus in the pardon of your sin. We do not want you to leave here not knowing Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. We just want to do for the internet audience, we want to do a, a prayer of confession. Say, Father, I know that you love me, died for my sins, and I receive you into my heart. I believe that Jesus died and rose again for my sins. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. I need you to take control of my life. I've made a mess of my life. I'm now born again in Jesus name. Amen. We say good night to our internet audience. Amen. And we say to you all who are still here right now. Amen. As you're standing. Praise the Lord as you're still standing. Hallelujah. That if you're needing